Hello, we are live here in sunny Michigan. It is Friday, middle of July. The day is not that important. The date at least. And we're talking about if you can make $1,000 a week reselling. And if so, how can you do that? Let me change the uh, camera for a second. We were filming two days ago with this same tripod. So uh, these live streams, I do these three days a week. If you're new, please remember to subscribe uh, for the next one coming out. And for the first two minutes or so, we kind of wait until people come in. Uh, I have to share the links out, share the links out to the video to the, uh, the Facebook group, which is the WBK Ultra group. There's a link to that in the description, as well as my Twitter. And my Twitter is at WB Knobloch, uh, same as on Instagram. We have 18 of us here right now. And if you're here, please feel free to, uh, to shout out the video on your own social media streams, your own Facebook, your own uh, Instagram, your own Twitter. It is immensely helpful because the more people who watch these videos, the more people will be able to make money for themselves. Uh, the more people won't be stuck in jobs they don't want, uh, career lines they don't like, places they don't want to live. A lot of that stuff is dependent upon how much money you can make. And so my hope is by teaching people how to make more money, uh, a lot of that misery can stop. So I say we are live on my Insta on my uh, Twitter, I mean. You can just retweet that too if you want to. It's at, at WB Knobloch. And then on Facebook, I just do the same thing so everyone who's a member of the group uh, can easily see this. Okay, now that the uh, now that the uh, the, the the basic uh, what what do you want to call it chores are done, I suppose I can look through the chat and see who is here. We have health, wealth, and life with Kelvo, Firecrest, the Region Flipper. Kev, Brian, Amy, Life by Melinda, Mike Erickson, and Money for Mars. Hello, 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 and check out, you found me on Instagram, I bought this shirt yesterday for a buck 99. It's Deadstock, Octopower, 1998 Detroit Red Wings vintage t-shirt. I'd say if I were to sell this, I might get 60 bucks for it, 50 bucks for it for the right buyer, uh, but I am the right buyer, I'm keeping it. Very rarely do I find t-shirts in the wild that fit my ginormous frame. We have the Family Flips and Jody Naylor joining us. If you don't know, the Family Flips is on a TV show that I am also on, airing August 4th at 10 p.m. on A&E Network called Extreme Unboxing. We buy Amazon pallets, well, well actually lots of different companies. We buy return pallets uh, and go through them in the show it's kind of like Storage Wars. It's kind of like uh, American Pickers. A mix of those two, I'd say. And at least on my end, nothing fake, no bullshit, no planted items. Uh, literally, I bought the pallets. They were delivered right to me. No one else touched them but me. So unless you think I'm, you know, seeding pallets, which I'm not doing because who has time for that? Uh, everything is real. Mommy hasn't showered uh, is here. That's exciting. Can't wait to watch y'all, she says. Thank you so much. It should be a good time. Uh, and so again, we're talking about uh, $1,000 per week because a lot of people making an extra thousand bucks a week or even making just a thousand bucks a week, maybe you're at a job right now where you're making half that a week and you wanna make more because you wanna buy a house, you wanna buy a car, you wanna have savings. How do you do that? And it's not that hard. It might seem like some insurmountable task, but everything seems hard at first, right? All we can do is work towards things and um, and try and become better people and try and become better businesses or have better businesses. So the first thing I want to bring up about how to uh, how to make $1,000 a week is we're just going to run through what is making $1,000 a week. So $1,000 a week, you're selling 10 items at a $100 profit per item. That's one way you can do it. But what uh, what constitutes a $100 profit item. So you're taking away, uh, well, you have the total sale price. So let's say I sell a DVD VCR combo for 150 on Amazon, which is pretty common. I've done that six times in the past four days. So what do we do then? Okay, so it's 150 minus the purchase price. Let's say the purchase price is 20 bucks. So we're at 130, all right? So that 130 is the money we already have after the purchase price. Then we have the cost of shipping, 
let's say that's another, another 15 bucks. So we're down to 105. Then we have the Amazon fee, which is 15%. 15% of 150 is 22.50. So we are down to uh, 187 and 50 cents, or sorry, not 187. $87 and 50 cents. So that 150 revenue is not even hundred dollars profit initially uh, In order to get that hundred bucks profit per item just to be safe just to be generous I would say you want to have items that sell for between 170 and two hundred dollars that you're buying for like 25 bucks 30 bucks That seems to be the higher end uh, of thrift store electronics that I've seen at least um, but it's not always going to be possible because sometimes these VCR units aren't selling for 150. They're selling for 75. They're selling for 80. Uh, the kind of things that sell for 200 plus, it's going to be things like uh, a lot of times, you know, um, new electronics. Uh, potentially, you know, like a PS4 will sell for above 200 bucks usually. I, th I haven't checked the prices recently, but I'd assume so. Um, if you have a Nintendo 64 bundle, that's going to sell for more than uh, the 200 bucks. But you have to take into account the price you're buying things for, uh, because oftentimes, you know, it's, it's just not easy. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that. If you don't have a niche, it's not easy just to look around and see things that are dramatically underpriced. That's why so many people recommend having niches, because uh, as you begin to learn more about the world of uh, DVD-VCR combos, as you begin to learn more about the world of autographed books um, or vintage t-shirts, or, or dead stock sneakers, or whatever it is, you begin to see that, okay, actually, there are uh, uh, eclectic collector's markets that are still doing fine. Um, speaking of sneakers, I pulled up an article that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, StockX put out a press release, I suppose you might call it, or a blog post four days ago, and they say, over the past six months, StockX has seen extraordinary growth across our platform. Despite unprecedented industry-wide challenges due to uh, COVID, we surpassed 2.5 in lifetime gross merchandise value. $10 million lifetime sales, oh, sorry, 10 million lifetime sales, not million dollars. And in May and June, we saw our two biggest months in platform history. And I'll share to this, I'm not gonna go over every single thing right now in this, in this uh, report they put out, but it's important to watch. Because certainly, uh, well, shoot, I can't actually, uh, maybe I can just do this. Let's see if this shares it. Maybe, it's, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. Um, but this is important because people are still buying sneakers, shoes, whatever StockX sells for a lot of money. They have not slowed down the way we've seen a lot of retail stores slow down. People's appetite for shoes is still high, at an all-time high on StockX or so they say. So potentially, could you make 100 bucks uh, 10 times a week selling sneakers? Absolutely, you could. But it's gonna get down to finding, okay, where where are my sources where I can buy them for 25, 30 bucks, sell them for 200? Um, I'm not sure how StockX's fee breakdown is exactly. I've never used them. Uh, I know a lot of folks who do use them, but I haven't done them uh, per, uh, per personally. But I wouldn't imagine the fees are more than, I mean, I can look it up right now. I wouldn't imagine the fees are more than, than 25%. StockX fees. T about 10% is what uh, Business Insider says. I know they just added a 3% facilitation fee uh, for payments. So let's say it's 15%, which puts it on par with Amazon. You're still looking at the same equation, the same, okay, 25 into, 100, into, 25 into 200 10 times a week. You're making between 50 and 60 grand a year. That's a lot of money. But let's say that's not, you can't do that. You don't have, you know, 500 bucks to invest, whatever it is, uh, because certainly the things do not sell immediately. In order to sell, um, you know, in order to sell 10 pairs of shoes a week, I don't know how many you have to have, but in order to sell like 10 VCR DVD combos a week, I would just estimate you're going to want to have about 50 in stock at any given time. Um, and that's if they're below like 150, 100,000 sales rank. Uh, so again, there's more details to this, but those are the things you learn as you uh, explore your niche. And I'm not just, I mean, here, here's some other good niches that aren't even selling. Binoculars, great niche. Hunting gear, great niche. Um, vintage sports cars, phenomenal niche. Graded sports cars, really great place to be. Um, these are things that generally I would see a lot more like collectors who are like myself buying. But if you're not like me uh, and you have, you have different 
different interests. Pursue those interests. Let's say you like, I don't know, polished rocks. The gemstone market, the, uh, the rock art market, those are very good. You can even say, okay, what about YouTube? To make $1,000 a week, you have to post three videos that get you 333 bucks a week or five videos a week that garner you uh, about $200. Now what you can do is look up what the CPM in your industry is. CPM is cost per thousand views and then just go that way. So generally on these videos, I make about 25 to 30 bucks CPM on these live streams. So what I have to do in order to get uh, 333 bucks a week is I have to get about 10,000 views per video on these live streams to make about a thousand bucks a week. When you begin to look at things like that from taking how much money you want and then reducing it down to how many days or how much money you have to make per day to make that amount of money, it's not so difficult, it becomes a lot easier. But what about, uh, let's say you can't really get in that space, but you wanna be, you know, uh, there's, let's say there's a lot of VCRs around you. Uh, generally a VCR, if you buy it for 10 bucks, you sell it for 100 bucks, you're looking at like 50 to $70 profit, depending on how heavy it is, depending on where it ships to. But let's just say this fits into our next criteria for the sake of the, for the, sake of, the um, of the argument or the plan. At $66.67 profit, you only have to sell 15 items a week uh, or basically two items a day to make $1,000 a week. You see all these people selling their $5 t-shirts, you know, or whatever it is, and they're selling thousands of units a week or a month, but they're not making a substantial amount of money. Our goal is not to sell as many things as possible. It's to make as much money as possible while working as little as possible. Or at least my goal when I resell is. My reselling uh, is allows me to do things like YouTube, to do things like go on vacations, to pursue other avenues. So what I'm trying to do is make as much money as possible while also working as little as possible. If that's you, then uh, then keep listening. And if you're here, if you're one of the 65 people, please give the video a thumbs up. I'm gonna take a break now uh, and read the comments. So if you have a question in the comments, I'll answer it now. And if you're just watching, please feel free to put a question uh, in the live chat. Again, if I missed the video, or sorry, if you missed the live stream, you're watching a replay on my YouTube channel because these all get posted, uh, feel free to put a question in the comments below and I will answer it. Let's see, Firecrest says, just got my bubble wrap and bubble envelope uh, delivered today. As advice to anyone who, on the low end like me, invest in bulk shipping items, not doing so is throwing money away. Oh, absolutely. I use these, uh, the type zero, it's like a pound sign, and then a zero, I'll write it right here. These are uh, zero pound mailers. This is what I buy. I pay about 10 cents for one of these, or no, about five cents for one of these. Uh, and if you were to go to Walmart and buy a five pack, It'd be like five bucks a piece. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, just go on eBay and, and search by the lowest price and you're gonna find someone who's selling them for a very low rate and it's gonna be a reliably, a re uh, reliably trusted transaction. Brian Chorley says 25 into 200 seems less likely to find consistently, but you only have to find 10 a week. You only have to find 10 a week. That's all it is. It's not like a really, let's say 15 a week to be you know on the generous side. Uh, if you begin viewing it that way, okay, how do you find 15 or 10 VCRs that sell uh, obsolete electronics that sell for between like 170 and 200? How do you do that? Well, one, you, you, uh, you have to go to a lot of thrift stores. You can't just go to your same two thrift stores and search those for five hours. You're gonna have to go to like 15 or 25 thrift stores. And that might mean you have to leave where you are location-wise and travel from you know point A to point B or point A, B, C, and D. And that might mean you have to have three days a week, you're driving, you know, 800 miles sourcing like this. Uh, so it also, you know, draws into, the, into, into, into consideration what kind of car you have uh, and, and how old your car is and that kind of stuff. But that's for a different video. This is just about the process you can follow. In my area, I've got, there's about 70 thrift stores and I go to about 15 pretty regularly because those are the ones that make me money. Uh, and I'm buying toys and electronics and, and sporting good stuff usually. I mean, for every, the, there, there's also the, the idea that, hey, okay, um, maybe you're not getting 25 into 200, but you're doing 100 into 500. And you do that three times a week because then you're making a thousand bucks that way. 
Uh, you know, any way you can cut it different ways, but it's always going to shake down uh, to the idea that you want to spend more time looking for high value items. Now, let's say that's totally impossible, though. Let's say all you can do is buy books for 10 bucks. You have to sell 100 books a week to do that. It's, uh, it's not necessarily easy, but it's possible. Leah Martinez says, do you recommend promoting items on eBay to increase sales Amazon? If it's private label on Amazon, uh, you want to experiment with um, paid advertisement. On eBay, it really depends what the item is, in my opinion. Uh, some things, they have so much search traffic, it doesn't make sense to promote the listing. But other things that are more keyword based, uh, like jewelry potentially, that makes more sense to me, uh, just, just from my perspective. Nicholas Gower says, I know you get asked a lot, but how easy is it to make 1K a week using the book Gaylord method? I'm thinking of selling my book business. It's very, very easy. You should be making a probably about, probably, I don't know, I'd say five to $7,000 a month if you're doing that. Uh, but it has to be, F it doesn't have to be. I would recommend doing it FBA, just because to manual fulfill uh, that many books a week is a real pain in the ass. Although in some cases you will make more money, especially with um, multiple orders. But it's not hard. You're going to end up working 60 hours a week for sure. I wouldn't say it's the best use of your time, but in my opinion, it is a very, very reliable way to do it. Tamikia, the couponing lady, says, or the, uh, oh, the couponing camper lady, double, double awesome right there. Uh, do you ever use Facebook Marketplace to sell items? I do if it's like uh, heavy weights or if it's like golf clubs or things that I don't generally enjoy shipping or will cost a lot to ship off of the, uh, the top of my sale, then I do Facebook Marketplace. But I also like to util utilize local auctions uh, because then it's sold. It sells in a week, no matter what, almost. Kamikaze says, what's the best way to reference sale price for items? I'm not sure what you mean by that. What, when you say reference, you're going to have to go into more detail about what you mean by that. Uh, you're saying 5 to 8K net profit per week for the Gaylord? No, 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 no. I'm saying when you buy truckloads of books. When you're buying truckloads of books and you're going through probably 10 to 15 pallets a week, not, not one Gaylord a week. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Um, you're generally going to get like, oh, boy. If I remember correctly, it's like three to eight hundred bucks a week uh, per per Gaylord, um, is what I was seeing. But sometimes you have ones that really pop off and have some very very rare books. But it's also hard to you know. It really comes down to what I would recommend if you're doing ga or truckloads of books is get employees and find people you can trust. It's a, it's hard to do yourself. Jason says. I try to promote my listings to sell faster, and sometimes they will sell faster. But in, like if you're selling Nintendo Switches, I do not think promotion is that is in your best interest. Low Look Matt says I have a stack of stuff head to eBay land, aka my storage unit. I have an unusual FBA account. Maybe I should. I have an unused FBA account. Maybe I should wait until things cool down for Amazon. What do you think? I think you should do F, promotion fulfilled FBM. You should do that right now. Um, the the wait times for um, the wait times for FBA to get checked in seem pretty high right now. It seems not the same across the board, so uh, that might not be the best way to sell if you want to hold on to your inventory. But it certainly is a good uh, uh, a good time to start doing Amazon. You know, every day is a good day to start selling on Amazon, in my opinion. Gina Moody says, "What company is best to buy when selling wholesale books?" So you're going to have to vet distributors yourself. It isn't, you know, this isn't like what food has the most protein in it. And you can go to like Google and look it up. You're going to have to contact uh, regional Salvation Armies, region liquidation centers, whatever it is, talk to them, uh, buy test pallets from all of them, go through a pallet of the book, track on your own what makes the most money, and then pursue that relationship. We can't just, you know, turn the box on its side and read the uh, nutritional facts. Nicholas Gower says, what's your opinion on Bitcoin? And if you don't know what it is, what's the first thing that comes to mind? I am a holder on Bitcoin. I've had it for a long time. I don't pay much attention to it. I think there's a lot of hype. I think a lot of people don't understand. It's uh, including myself, don't understand 
uh, the extent of the way it's going to be used and the extent of the way it can be manipulated. So I don't give offer any uh, investment advice on, on that particularly. Leanne Martinez says, Amazon accidentally sent me 70 items that was someone else's FBA and Amazon told me to keep it. Has it ever happened to you? It arrived at my house in three pallets. Wow. Um, no, that's never happened to me. That's absolutely crazy, but it sounds like you're going to make some money if you're supposed to keep it. Uh, what are the items? Uh, let's see. Kimora Monroe says, if you are brand new to this, what do you recommend as the very first investment? Kimora, what I say to everyone is start off with used books. Sell used books because used books... Not a lot of folks have a, a, an inherent interest in them, so it's a good way to unemotionally start your business. Secondly, uh, it's easy to know if they're going to sell or not and watch my other videos and I go into detail about what you should uh, pay attention to. And thirdly, you're not going to get a lot of returns because if the book is not in just miserable condition, you can say it's okay, it's acceptable, and they'll buy it knowing what condition it's in. Low Luck Matt says, would you mind sharing any tips for fulfilling, for fulfilling merchant fulfilled items? Also, any shipping materials you suggest for heavy electronics? Uh, so, I guess my tips are make sure the item is clean, make sure it works, make sure it's packaged securely. Uh, and to sell heavy electronics, what I do is I'll cut off pieces of cardboard and put them around the corners. Because generally, the way electronics break is something hits the corner, that's like a pressure point for it, and it shatters it somewhere else. Uh, generally, if it's like a VCR DVD combo, the top and bottom, they've got a lot more surface area, so there's not going to be as much force on a, a small enough surface area to cause a dent or a damage or a piercing or whatever, but the corners and the faceplate are what you want to protect the most. That's my, I guess my only two big tips. Uh, Woofer Jr. says, I'm holding, I believe in four years you can go anywhere in the world and buy anything with Bitcoin. That might be true. That might be true. Jason Kidman says, I sold my pit bike on let go for only a thousand bucks less than what I paid for it. Jason, I'm sorry. You might have lost money on that. It sounds like. Uh, Nath Nick Nicholas Gowers says, I'm leaving today to do a 15 day road trip visiting 75 to 100 thrift stores, buying used books, got an employee with me, should be fun. If I were you, I would document that if you're comfortable and put it on YouTube because that's the kind of people who love, or that's the kind of video people love to watch. I love seeing long, drawn-out processes. To uh, The couponing camper lady, Tamika, or Tamikia, one of the two, but she uh, she's a couponing camper lady, says, I dollar general penny shop, so I have hundreds of penny items to sell. Do you recommend I use Amazon FBA so I let them handle them? So it depends. Are they a lot of the same items? Because on penny items, uh, oftentimes the FBA fees make the items kind of not worth doing it. But what you can do is sell them in bulk on eBay. So if you have 100 Snickers bars, for example, do not FBA them individually. Sell them in a bulk lot uh, on, on, on eBay, especially if they're close to the expiration date. And you're going to get a lot more money per a lot more profit per unit even though you might see the revenue is higher on amazon uh because of the cost of shipping because of fba fees all that stuff i would venture that most often uh if you have penny items you're going to make more money selling them bulked on ebay or mercari or facebook marketplace or whatever but make sure that you are selling them in bulk let's see what else we have I wanted to share kind of an interesting uh, article I saw. Japanese animal, they, this is from the gamer, they say scalper. Amongst people who uh, are motivated by inconsequential things like video games or concerts or whatever, they really don't like people who make, who make their hobbies more expensive. And so they use the term scalper, which is absolutely insane to say because it references like cutting off the top of someone's head. And I really don't like that word, but they use it. Japanese Animal Crossing scalper is currently making bank by reselling amiibo cards. One scalper in Japan was interviewed about reselling amiibo cards and scalping them. So what this person did is they would buy switches or they would buy uh, certain video games that have the amiibo cards which give you a imaginary character in the game 
and they would sell them for like 10 or 15 bucks and they'd be, they'd be getting them for a dollar or so. So this is a perfect example uh, of something that, that, you know, maybe they're not making a hundred bucks per item, but it's low work, uh, low risk, and it appears to be a high payout. They're buying them for around 93 cents and selling them for about $10. Uh, and, and this is really making a lot of gamers angry. That is absolutely idiotic, in my opinion. They're dumb, um, but whatever, it's their, it's their right to be upset. But it just shows you that there are ways you can go about making money that isn't necessarily doing what I do. You can follow people's interests, uh, you know, follow the money, as they say. Crypto Psy says, what are your tips for finding new books for FBA? Barnes and Noble, Walmart clearance, etc. So it's going to be going to these stores and look for them. But always remember, if you do not have receipts from distributors, invoices, I mean, not receipts, you may potentially lose a claim if it's not new. Um, Amazon says for every product, not just new products, you have to have uh, distribution proof. Now, is that... In very, very rare cases, that, that causes an issue for the seller. But just so you know, you're, you're kind of in a gray area on Amazon when you do this. So my first tip is be aware of that. Be aware of what you're doing. Uh, and, you know, don't get upset if you, your account banned. Uh, has I, have I heard of that happening? Only with, like, textbooks and that kind of stuff. Um, but it just my recommendation for anyone who is uncertain about what they're doing is sell things as like new condition. If you don't know, sell it as like new condition because I'm never going to recommend or I'm trying not to recommend that anyone does things that go against Amazon's terms and conditions or might, even if it doesn't, I mean, the issue is, is now Amazon has so many terms and conditions that oftentimes they contradict themselves. Um, so my advice is just make sure that you know what you're doing. Now to sell these in like new condition, how do they have to look? They have to look essentially new. So no remainder marks, no dog ears, um, you know, no clearance stickers even. I would say remove those, uh, that kind of stuff. Let's see. Low Luck Matt says, last one, would you cross list eBay plus merchant? I don't personally. That's a lot of work for not a lot of benefit and it allows you to make a lot of mistakes if you sell a lot of items like I do, uh, and you forget to delete the listings on the other platform after it sells. Kev says, question, just subscribe to Brickseek, Brickseek Extreme, but worried anything I buy, the price will tank by the time it gets received. Thoughts? So the way I use Brickseek is not for searching out clearance items. It's for searching out items that are in extremely high demand, like pools, like Nintendo Switches, like uh, sporting cards, stuff like that. So the price is not going to tank. I don't do the clearance stuff because that will, that's more susceptible to price tanking. And for all of you who don't know, price tanking means the price goes down because there's a higher supply now that a lot of resellers have gone to the market. We have Chris Talley, Storage Auction Pirate, Jason Crypto, Cy, Nicholas, Brian. Hello, hello, hello. We have almost 90 people. So if you're here, please give the video a thumbs up. It is much appreciated. Brian Trolley says, I saw one of your videos from earlier this year and you wanted to increase your profit per item this year. How are you doing on your 2020 goals? My profit per item has gone up considerably uh, with the exception if you of media. So I sell a bunch of DVDs now and I'm not really making those. Um, I'm not really making those. I'm not making like a thousand bucks per DVD, I guess I should say. Um, so as you take out... If I were to tell you just like the raw number, I bet the average sale value has gone up from like, probably gone up like 80%. But if you take out DVD sales, because DVD sales are so easy for me, I just pop them in one of these bad boys and um, out the door. If you take out those sales, I'm probably up 500%, uh, where I rarely sell an item uh, that goes for, I, I rarely, rarely sell an item that I have to actually do work to package for less than 50 bucks and ideally it's around the 150 to 100 uh dollar mark hey we got five bucks from low luck matt and i don't have the gong yet it's in transit but when i get it i'll do a i'll do a bang for you 
Storage Auction Pirate says, your garage looks just like mine. This is not my garage, this is my warehouse. It's about 2,000 square feet, and uh, it's in the process of being cleaned out. So, it really isn't that bad. Um, the issue is, is I'm not, what I should do is just pay for a 90 foot dumpster and take it all out at one, in one go, but I'm not. I'm looking at properties right now that have like big barns on them because I'm sick and tired of paying for this warehouse when I have a house of my own and a garage of my own. But it's very important for me to keep my workplace separate from, uh, from my home because if I don't, then it gets very messy, it gets very cluttered, it gets very hectic. <laughs> Low look, Matt says, no money horn? I want my money back. Thanks for all the videos. You're the goat. Thank you. And so, yeah, what I said in the video two ago is it just got too tedious to do the horn for every every whatever. And so what I'm doing now is on the on the uh, on on initial donations, I do a gong when it gets here, and then when I hit 50 bucks, that that's a special occasion. That that's uh that's the money horn. Let's see. Uh, so don't worry, the money horn is not gone. It's just uh it, it's gotten a pay raise. Crypto Sai says, Blake, do you believe Amazon's new inventory performance index policy will affect a lot of sellers in the future? What can we do to keep it above 500? So to keep it above 500, what you can do is have a high sell-through rate and have no stranded inventory. Do I think it will affect a lot of sellers? No, not really, I don't. I think for a lot of sellers, they're actually gonna have more space, even if they're below that index. I think what it's going to affect is a, a lot of wholesale distributors, uh, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of people like that who were previously storing maybe tens of thousands of units at Amazon. Jason says, how about doing a dance every time you get money donated? Absolutely not, I will never be doing that. Chris Talley says, are my questions not appearing in the chat or am I not worthy of an answer? Chris, if I missed it, that is not the right way to get an answer. That sounds really weird. I can't judge your facial expression, so it just sounds like you're being passive aggressive, and I do not like passive aggressive people. I like direct people who don't waste my time. Okay. So some more some more questions or some more things I want to share, uh, talk about. I saw an interesting news story. This is out of um, Mobile County. Yeah, Alabama. So I guess we should ask uh, the bearded picker if he's heard about this. And the headline is, Woman accused of defrauding volunteers reselling donated masks. Federal authorities have in in a indicted a Mobile County woman accused of defrauding a volunteer sewing group in order to obtain free masks so she could resell them during the COVID-19 pandemic. And basically she found selling groups on Facebook, said she was from a hospital, uh, so she can get masks to resell on Etsy or whatever. Uh, people like this give resellers a really bad name. And uh, by, no, by no estimation of, uh, you know, I don't think anyone should ever be defrauding people to get things to resell. Don't do that. And even anything COVID related, you're always opening yourself up to enormous criticism uh, and a lot of hate because people have such strong opinions um, about everything related to this. It's the most the most politicized thing of my entire life, it seems like. Um, people's opinions. The indictment reads, Williams falsely promised that she would deliver the free masks she obtained to healthcare workers at local hospitals. Instead of delivering the masks to healthcare workers, she intended to sell them for profit. She obtained approximately 140 masks this way. So realistically, she's only making like 700 bucks too, which is really a shame, really a shame. Okay. Uh, Kinds Corner says, working on getting ungated in toys, I have an invoice from EE, e., but keep being denied. Ever heard of this problem? Who is EE? E? Uh, you're gonna have to tell me more because I've never heard that acronym used for any distributor. Um, who I recommend using is AENT. Although uh, recently, I ha what happens when these things do get denied is usually it's an issue with, uh, it isn't an issue with like, oh, we don't want you to be a seller. It's an issue with um, 
the seller not understanding what information has to be present on the invoice. So uh, basically, you have to make sure that the invoice on your Amazon seller account matches the invoice uh, address on um, uh, the address of the buyer on the invoice. Oftentimes, a lot of people signed up with old addresses on their uh, Amazon account and they've moved or they have their stuff shipped to a storage unit or they have it shipped to their warehouse or whatever. Uh, and so there's a discrepancy there and it gets denied on those grounds. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual invoice. It's Entertainment Earth. I don't know. I've never, I've never used them, um, but that's my advice usually. Low Luck Matt says, do you have anything you collect? Godzilla is my thing, just curious. Not really, I don't. Uh, I, I collect things, but I do nothing with them, so that's kind of just like hoarding, I guess. I have a lot of video games, I have a lot of books, I have a lot of sports cards, I have a lot of DVDs, but I wouldn't say I'm a collector of sorts. Google Mail says, uh, can the invoice be in your business LLC name and your Amazon account and your personal name? No, you cannot do that. That's going to be uh, grounds for dismissal. Let's see. Okay, appreciate it, says uh, Kynes Corner. And if you guys have any more questions, uh, just keep putting them in the chat. And if I don't get to them, it's because my chat view is like this big. It's not a... Uh, do not take anything pers... My advice to everyone, do not take anything personally. If you take things personally, you're already you're already at a disadvantage. Nothing is that really that personal, you know. No one's out to get you. Jody Naylor says I have used Entertainment Earth to get ungated with toys with success. Entertainment. I think I actually referenced them in the in the uh, in the how to get ungated. Yeah, actually, yeah, I totally did. Um, I'm gonna link to these guys in the chat. Storage auction pirate says rule number two of the four laws of agreement: don't take things personal. I 100% agree. Jesus says 40 years from now you'll be on hoarding, buried alive. Just messing with you. I hope not. I really hope not. So this is, it looks like they use uh, just like a WordPress website, maybe. I don't, actually, never mind, I don't know what this is. So they have uh, Star Wars toys, Funko toys, Marvel, Transformers, action figures, McFarlane toys. Do they have DVDs too? So it looks like I'm not seeing any DVDs on uh, Entertainment Earth, but uh, wow, they have a whole category of just one left. <laughs> That's nuts. Um, I have I don't have an account with these guys. I don't think I do. If I have, it's years old. But uh, again, I mean, there's so many distributors all around. Google Mail says, "Can we switch our Amazon account from personal to LLC? Is it worth it?" I think it's worth it. Mine's an LLC. I'd recommend that everyone does that. It's much easier to keep your to keep it separate from your personal whatever you do. Wow. Storage Auction Pirate says you should try a YouTube auction for selling wholesale lots to viewers. I sold 84k in 30 live streams during quarantine. Wow. Chris Talley says, thanks, Kev. My apologies. I have asked several direct questions. Then just keep asking them, man. Uh, you know, keep putting them in the live stream, and I'll see it eventually. It's not like I'm ignoring anyone. Why would I do that? Kev says, I use AE all the time, and they are great. That's who I use generally, too. Best Stuff Seller says, make sure to buy from EE Distribution and not just EE. Low Luck Matt says, I know you're not the biggest clothing guy, but I have to ask, ever come across any cool band shirts? I do, I find some, um, I find uh, a lot of like, um, not a lot. I found a few Iron Maiden t-shirts that I like. I found a few like rap t-shirts that I like. I found a few Insane Clown Posse t-shirts that I've sold before. I don't really spend a lot of time in the clothing section. I'll walk by the rack of like new items and just scan for t-shirts over like 
15, 25 seconds, and then I'll walk on. Daniel Avenson says, looking to getting into buying pallets. I'm in Chicagoland area and want to do something with local pickup. Think of focusing on quick, quick flip versus big profit. Thoughts on finding pallets. So you can just Google pallet sellers uh, in regards to local pickup. That's going to take a bit more groundwork. I do not know any pallet sellers uh, in Chicago. But if you go on, I'll, I'll post a link, bstocksupply.com. That's a marketplace for a lot of third-party pallet sellers. Uh, and if you find someone in Chicago, I would believe they'd be more open to, um, to a local pickup. Christian Gonzalez says, I decided to keep a PS3 fat from a lot I bought. The PS3 is a great device. I don't know if you knew this, but for there was a time in history when the PS3 was one of the most efficient computers uh, in the world. And the United States Army or the Air Force or whoever it was, was using them to power some sort of machine they, or some sort of computer they had. They were using the, um, let me see if I can look that up. U.S. Army uses PS3s. Yeah, okay. So in 2009, the U.S. Department of Defense announced plans to buy an additional 2,200 PS3s to complement a military supercomputer cluster running on 336 PS3 systems. The military's purchase was, was likely encouraged by the PS3 price cut. Wow. So there was over 2,500 PS3s being used by the U.S. Department of Defense to create a supercomputer. And then in 2010, the U.S. Air Force used just south, south of 2,000 PS3s to build their supercomputer. Very interesting, right? <laughs> this is for, I'll, I'll, I'll link to this because that's just a, this is a, it happened a few times. That's a crazy story, I think. Here's another crazy uh, news article. eBay nears $10 billion sale of classified ads unit. The e-commerce giant will decide between two all-cash bids submitted by online retailer Prosys and private equity and a private equity consortium, and a third cash and share offer from Norwegian Classifieds Ad Group Ad Aventa, the sources say. So if eBay gets if the eBay classified classified clads classified ads get bought out by private equity. I would assume they're going to piece them apart, sell the parts, and just maintain some very, very minimal structure. Um, eBay's classified ads business includes Gumtree and Kijiji. So it isn't just eBay, it's their whole portfolio of things they own. Man, alive, that could really mess up, um, that could really mess up a lot of people's businesses if that gets torn apart or sold. Gumtree, if you don't know, is different from Gumroad. I have a Gumroad link where I sell my downloads. Gumtree is just like a classified ads website. Uh, it looks like it's generally in uh, in France, it appears to be, based on looking at the website. So uh, let's see, we have favored, bless, and best stuff seller here. Thank you very much. I'd like to see Facebook classified ads. That's pretty much what um, Facebook Marketplace is, is classified ads. All right, so we have 91 people in the chat. If you're here, please give the video a thumbs up and feel free to ask any questions that you have in the live stream. Uh, if you're emailing me, if you're trying to contact me on Facebook Marketplace or Facebook Messenger, I'm not gonna answer because I get thousands of those a month, thousands of emails, less messages, but still too many. I don't communicate that way. So the only way to get me to answer your question or the best way, I suppose, is to post it in the live stream or uh, or put it in the comments. That's how you get an answer. Lori R says, what was the name of your new show? Again, it's called Extreme Unboxing. There's like six, six businesses. Uh, I'm in like eight, seven or eight of the 12 episodes, uh, I believe. And then hopefully we get renewed for season two. That would be amazing. 
The region flipper says, am I ungated for Hasbro? I, yes, I am. I am ungated for Hasbro. I got auto ungated like four or five years ago. Uh, and I think you can do that now by using AENT. Uh, someone also said that EE -E, uh, Entertainment Earth is good. Let's see if they have Hasbro toys. It looks like they do have Hasbro toys. You could use Entertainment Earth to get ungated for Hasbro, it looks like. I'm just going to copy and paste that right there. Whoops, that's the same one again. So you're going to want to go to distributors like the link that I just posted, create an account with them, do whatever hoops they have, jump through them, uh, and go about that that way. Uh, a lot of you guys know what Jungle Scout is, and they had a pretty interesting um, blog post I wanted to share. I'll share this in the chat as well. Uh, Jungle Scout, it's an Amazon um, tool, but they had a blog post about reasons why your FBA may become stranded. And I want to, and stranded inventory has a lot to do with your IPI score, your inventory performance index. Uh, and so the main reasons they're gonna, they're, that they're talking about, and the main reasons that I think exist, are. Um, well, the first thing is going to be a pricing error. So if your price is too high and it violates Amazon's fair pricing uh, rules, which they don't really go into detail about, um, or if your pricing is below or above the minimum and maximum pricing that you've put in uh, when you listed the item, it will strand it. If it is a uh, ASIN that becomes restricted after you've listed it, it'll become stranded. If the listing is uh, suspended or suppressed, suspended means it was too many negative complaints it was breaking the rules and suppressed is going to be uh maybe the images are not good enough maybe there's um foreign characters in the description uh, there could be a listing error i don't know what a listing error is i get that all the time on my stranded inventory page that could be uh any number of things it could just be you know let's say uh someone else made the listing and they delete it it could be that when the inventory gets uploaded to Amazon, there's an error in the way it gets uploaded. Uh, if it's a grocery uh, item, if it's expired, that will go from, from sellable to stranded. If it's a closed or deleted listing, then here's a big one. This is how I got screwed over. I closed, um, what I meant to do was just make my inventory inactive. This is a few years ago. What I ended up doing was uh, closing and deleting all of the listings of the things that I didn't want to sell because they just weren't moving. And so that caused me to have like 2,000 stranded uh, inventory units. That's a big one, closing or deleting listings. And it might not occur from you. Someone else might have done it. If it's like a listing, like let's say this VHS tape has 50,000 sellers uh, and the person who made the listing um, deletes the listing, this will go off Amazon. And the the 50,000 sellers will all get stranded inventory. It's a good article post. I think you should all read it. All right, we are just getting up to about an hour right now, uh, and I'm going to head out pretty soon. So if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. I'm going to the beach this afternoon. Going to have a great time laying in the sun, soaking up the rays. Uh, but I wanted to get in here. I had to ship out some stuff first. I sold... I don't know, six things last night that I had to ship out this morning. Uh, not a lot of stuff. I haven't really gone sourcing or listing in a few weeks. I've been going up north a lot. I've been doing stuff for the TV show. I've been trying to film more, more videos. So my sourcing is definitely down, but I'm still able, you know, because of my inventory I have in here, still able to make a living, still able to pay for the rent and all this stuff, all that good stuff. Frugalisti says, bring your fishing rod, maybe catch some walleye for dinner and film it. I would love that. We're going to a beach. You know, actually, we're going on Lake Huron up near Lexington, and I believe there actually is a fishing pier around there, so maybe I will. I don't think I'm going to film it because I'm very bad at fishing, <laughs> and I might not catch anything. What I got to do is I got to get a GoPro set up, and then I'll do it. Uh, this might be one of the last live streams I do from the warehouse. I'm going to be... Um, transitioning to my to my office at my home very soon i have a new computer i have two new cameras i have all this great stuff um and hopefully 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 
we have a much more professional setup while I'm still able to give you guys uh, authentic, real advice. All right, guys, that seems to be it. Ricky, Frugalisti, Crypto Psy, Lisa, The Region Flipper, Lori, Storage Slayer, Christian, Favored, Bless. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Have a great weekend. Don't do anything stupid. Don't be a shithead. And I'll see you on Monday, probably in the afternoon, hopefully more tan.